Spicy Metech here, and in this video, we will begin our series on parasitology, and in this series, we will be talking about the different parasites, their life cycles, treatments, diagnosis, and pathophysiologies. Without further ado, let's start with the nematodes, and in this episode, I will talk about Ascaris lumbricoides. So Ascaris lumbricoides belongs to a group of worms called nematodes, and nematodes are commonly known as roundworms and constitute the phylum nematoda. Ascaris lumbricoides, also known as the giant intestinal roundworm, ay isa lang sa over 15,000 species of roundworms. But the reason why this is so closely studied is because of how commonplace they are in developing countries and the detrimental effects they may cause to our health. Ascaris lumbricoides is parasitic in nature, which means it benefits at the expense of its host. So yung parasite lang ang nakikinabang sa host, pero yung host hindi po nakikinabang sa parasite. Now let's talk about the structure of this parasite. Let's start with the eggs, otherwise known as the ova. The fertilized eggs of this parasite appear as rounded, possess a thick shell with an external outer layer with mammalations. But in some cases, this outer layer is absent at ang tawag po dito ay decorticated. The unfertilized eggs, however, appear elongated and are larger. So makikita natin na mas mahaba po siya than the fertilized eggs, but with a thinner shell and mainly possess masses of refractile granules. Let's move on to the adult worms. Now these worms have a very distinct appearance. Their color ranges from creamy white to pink. The female, as we can see here, is much bigger in size. Also, magkaiba din po yung morphology ng tails nila. We can see na straight yung tail ng female, tapos dito sa male, mayroong slight curvature. Now, how does this parasite cause disease? The mode of transmission of Ascaris is through ingestion or through the fecal-oral route. And this happens when an individual ingests usually unknowingly infective eggs. So we're looking at fertilized Ascaris ova. Now after ingestion, the fertilized egg will then release the larval worm. And this larval worm will penetrate the duodenal wall and get carried by the blood to the heart and into the lungs. And when these larval worms reach the lungs, they will stay there until they molt or magkakast off ng protective covering niya. Once these worms molt, they will get coughed up by the host, marie ingest muli ng host, and then goes right back into the GI tract, and the cycle continues. They end up in the gut, and then mature into adult worms. The adult female finds the adult male, they reproduce, which makes humans the definitive host as it supports the sexually reproductive stage of said parasites. Now in the early stages, most individuals with Ascaris are usually asymptomatic, which means they present no symptoms. But in some cases, patients may present with eosinophilic pneumonia. Now because the eosinophils play a key role in helminth response due to their eosinophilic granules that can damage these helminths. So patients may present with eosinophilia in their bloodstream. We could also find Charcot Leiden crystals, which are crystals composed of eosinophil protein galactin 10 found in people with allergic diseases or parasitic infections. In late stages, most people are still often asymptomatic, but patients may present with more serious symptoms like nausea, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and often patients will present with a greater worm burden. Now, the complications of Ascaris are what makes it a serious condition. In cases wherein the worm burden is very high, bowel blockage may occur. And due to excessive larval migration with the invasion of the biliary tree, it may cause inflammation and even more blockage which may include peritonitis and pancreatitis. These worms may also carry with them fecal coliform to other sites, causing sepsis. Now, how is someone diagnosed with Ascariasis? The easiest and most cost-effective way is through fecal microscopy. We check the stool sample of the patient suspected with Ascariasis, and if Ascaris ova is recovered, it wouldn't matter if it's fertilized or not. 
one may also submit themselves to a colonoscopy or an ultrasound to visually inspect the intestinal tract for the presence of adult worms. Now for the treatment. We have three typical drugs to eliminate these worms, and they are albendazole, mebendazole, and pyrantel. Albendazole and mebendazole disrupt the helminthic microtubules, and pyrantel causes helminthic paralysis that will cause the helminth to lose its grip to the intestinal lumen. And for more severe cases, surgery may be required for severe obstruction. However, this can be prevented with good sanitation practices and good personal hygiene. To summarize, Ascaris is also known as the giant intestinal roundworm. Its mode of transmission is through ingestion via the fecal-oral route. It is found in developing countries with poor sanitation. And it clinically presents as a GI upset, bowel obstruction, larval migration, and many more. Its diagnosis relies on ova or adult identification. And its treatment is albendazole, mebendazole, and pyrantel. And this and of course be prevented with good personal hygiene and good sanitation practices. That would be all for now. If you want more content like this, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned and I hope you enjoyed.